Hey everybody, all right, so I finished up the fire blocking for the most part along the perimeter of the basement. Now today I'm gonna to move on to the HVAC. I'm gonna add a couple supply lines and then a couple return lines. I've actually already started. So up here, this one I've tapped into the main trunk and I've got it feeding over here and that's gonna supply uh, some conditioned air into what will be the bathroom. All right, and then I've also added this one, this middle guy here, it actually tapped in on the top and then it tees off. So the one T comes over here and that supply will supply part of what will be like the wet bar dining room area of that, uh, the basement. And then the other side of this T, uh, you can see kind of drops in right there. That's gonna supply part of what will be the living room area. So I've already uh, done a few of these things. I've worked out some of the kinks since this is my first time uh, running my own duct work. And I thought I'd do another supply line, okay? So the same thing, I'm gonna tee off, tee, come off of this with a T over here in between these two lines and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna run another supply that way and it's gonna feed another line into the living room area and then I'm gonna come across this way and drop another supply into the wet bar dining room area. All right, and then after that, I'm going to expand this main trunk by four feet so I can tap in uh, another two lines. One line's gonna run that way and it's gonna feed what will be the office. And then the other one's going to tap in and feed what will be the workout area right here. And then I'll add a couple of returns as well. So enough talking, let's get after it. All right, so real quick, let's run through the tools and the items that I'm gonna be using today. So we got our 10 snips. So we got a right cutter, a straight cutter, and a left cutter. You could probably just get away with this straight cutter right here and be totally fine. Um, then I've got two drills. I just have them because I have two different bits in each one. You could just get away with one though. So I got the hex bit, and then I got just a standard Phillips bit. Uh, I got a tape measure here, a knife, uh, something to mark out the duct work, a straight bladed screwdriver. We got wood screws for screwing in the duct supports. And then these are the self-tapping screws with the hex head um, that you use to connect the ductwork. And then after I connect it with screws, I like to follow up and just tape it, tape all the seams with that um, foil tape. And then, oh, we got the crimper. I'll show you where to use that. This was like 20 bucks, I just picked it up. Oh, and then probably most importantly, because ductwork tends to be really sharp, uh, especially after you cut it, we got some gloves. So make sure to wear gloves. And this is called a starter collar, I believe. And it looks a little bit funky, but basically this just hooks into here. Kind of like a box top, all right? And then it's gonna sit down this way into the new hole that you just cut in. And then these fins, you're gonna reach from the inside and you're gonna bend these fins back. And that's gonna hug the ductwork right there. So then this isn't going anywhere. All right, so just like this. All right, so then I put a couple screws in here and then one on this side, and then I'll come around it with the foil tape and just seal it off nicely. All right, so one thing that might be missed if you're not really thinking about it, and the way that I like to go about this is I work from the source, the air source, out to 
uh, the vent in the ceiling. So in my case, the air is gonna come out here through the trunk and it's gonna go this way and it's gonna go this way. So what that means is we got a crimped side right here and the new piece is gonna go over the, I guess the old piece. So the, the every new piece that you put on, say you got uh, 10 sections of this straight piping, every new piece is gonna go over the last piece that you installed. So in this case, I'm, I have this crimped side right here. I got my new piece. This is gonna overlap. You get the idea. This is gonna overlap that piece. So, if you can already see the problem, we only got one crimp side. So that means I have to add crimps to this side because on this side, another new piece is gonna come over here and go over the top of that. And that's what this tool is. Basically, it's just a really crappy scissors. <laughs> So it's got these five teeth and there's enough space in between them that when you squeeze it together, it crimps it. So all you do is just put it on the edge and squeeze it. All right, so just like that, and I'm gonna go all the way around. But what that does is it just creates a little bit smaller uh, radius around here so that the next piece can fit over the top of it. All right, so now both sides have a crimped end and we can slide our new pieces on top of that. Right, and then we just add a couple screws to each seam and then I'm going to tape around each one. And that right there is a hundred times easier than doing it up on a ladder in between the different uh, floor joists. So that probably just saved me a half hour, no lie. All right, so I just added another five foot section of ductwork on this side. Uh, simple as just adding another support. And then I just threw a couple screws in there and taped around the entire seam. So now I wanna get this a little bit closer to the exterior wall. But if I put another five foot section, it's gonna be, I think a little bit too close because we're planning maybe some kind of a built-in over here. So I am going to split it. Um, I'm going to cut a five foot section, not quite in half, I'm gonna put three feet on this side, and then I'm going to take the other two remaining feet and add it over on this side. So that gets me a little bit closer to the exterior wall over in like what will be the wet bar kind of area. So let me show you how to uh, cut some ductwork. 
All right, so I've got another five foot section of this uh, six inch round ductwork, and I'm going to try to cut it uh, right about here. So first, take a tape measure, and I just like to use a red Sharpie, and mark a couple spots around the outside of where you wanna cut. So in my instance, let me double check actually. Okay, I just had to double check the one I previously ran. All right, so I'm going to cut this at three feet. So it's gonna leave me two feet on this side remaining. So just make a couple marks along the outside. Uh, this is, it doesn't have to be perfect, so just do your best. All right, and then just play connect the dots, so. Again, I, ha I think it helps if you kind of hold your hand steady and then use your other hand to roll the ductwork. Just like that. It's pretty close, all right? So then this is definitely an instance where you're gonna wanna put some gloves on. All right, and then I've got my straight cutter. And then we're just gonna kind of open this up a little bit. Not too far, you don't want to kink it really, but uh, just give you some working space and then just cut right along it. I find that I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna cut with my right hand. Uh, and I use my other hand to kind of pull it straight up and then this other side will naturally still want to curve down. And then I get just about, probably a little more than halfway, turn it around, and then come at it from the other side. Now we got two pieces. And then right away, let's go ahead and just connect them together. And the other side. So now you'll notice that on this piece, um, we're gonna be connecting up here to the five foot section that we just installed. But this piece has no crimps on either end. So it doesn't really matter which end you put them on, but we gotta add some crimps. So, take the crimper and just proceed along the outside. All right, so we got one crimped end, one straight end. This, we got the fa factory crimped end and the straight end. So now we can take these two pieces and go ahead and install them in the ceiling. So we have the factory crimped end on this side, and we'll put the straight end on that side, but it was just easier to add this other uh, crimp to this other side while we are on the ground. We'll have to use this later on when we put like a little elbow on it and then put the ceiling grill in. All right, so I just got done putting that three foot section of ductwork right above me. And for the time being, I'm just gonna put an elbow on it. Um, until I set my grill at the specific height that I need, I'm just going to direct the airflow straight down. So this is an elbow you can pick up at any of the big box stores. And right now it's straight, but if you look at like this section in particular, you can see that uh, right here there's a fat side. And then if you kind of follow that around, you'll see that it turns into a skinny side. So to get a 90 degree elbow, all we gotta do is connect all the skinny sides together. And how you do that is you just twist this around. All right, twist it around until all the skinny sides are touching. Do your best not to reach too far in because sometimes there can be some sharp parts and you would slice your hand open. 
on the outside section, so this section and this section, just keep your hands, you know, just pinch it on the outside, you should be fine. Or uh, <laughs> be smart and put some gloves on. So we're just gonna twist this around, that looks pretty good. All right, so there's our 90 degree elbow. And I'm just going to connect that, like I said, on the end of the ductwork that I just got finished running. And uh, for right now, I'm just gonna put some foil tape on it. Um, and that should hold it in place for right now. So let's do that. All right, I'm just gonna follow up with a little piece of tape. just to keep it in place uh, while I build the rest of the basement. All right, so currently I don't have a support at the end um, and I'm going to want one eventually, but until I know exactly where I want this, you know, I don't know if this needs to go a little bit higher or if it needs to sit a little bit lower. So until I know that, uh, I'm not gonna put a support, but just note that you will want a support at this end. So all of this duct work, this, three and a half feet isn't just cantilevered over the top because eventually I'll probably sag a little bit, uh, put a little bit more pressure on the, the uh, drywall on your ceiling. You just don't want that. So you're gonna wanna add a support at the end. All right, and just a little bit different angle on this. First thing I did was I added this piece across there. Um, that just gives me something solid to screw these two screws into. Really locks in this end. This isn't going anywhere. I know before I said that you're gonna wanna support here. It wouldn't hurt, um, but now that I've got this locked in down here, and then I've got this support over here, um, this three feet, that's not going anywhere. So uh, it's up to you if you wanna add another support. Again, that's not gonna hurt, but I don't think it's completely necessary. So I added this piece in there so I could screw that in there. And then I added these two little blocks on the side because um, I think the grills that I picked up, the two mounting hole screws are on the ends of it. So these two blocks give me something to screw the grill into later on. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. I know that this isn't completely level all the way across. Um, just because there's a slight angle coming down, so it kind of slopes down as it moves this way. Um, but for sure on this, this front lip right here, that's a half inch difference. So that gives my drywall, which is a half inch drywall, somewhere to bump into. It's going to be nice and flush there and should finish up pretty nicely. All right, so when you go to the store and you want to pick up another section of the trunk, like the main line of the ductwork, it's going to come in two pieces. So. Uh, I already have one of the seams together, but basically it comes in two L's. So this is a piece, and then this is a separate piece. So right now I still gotta connect this seam, and I'll show you how to do that. The easiest to be pushing down on the seam. So right here we have like this little U slot, and then we have this uh, just bent over piece of the uh, ductwork right here, and then it's got these little dimples in it. So it's got these dimples right here. So there's one, there's another one. And these dimples are what keeps this piece in the U section of the other piece. So it's really easy, just 
put that slot into the U shape of it, of the other piece, and just push down. You might hear them snap like that. And just work your way all the way down. Kind of double check. Just make sure that these, this inside corner basically is lined up with the other side. All right, and then you're gonna wanna pick up a pack of these duct hangers. Um, look like this. Basically, they're just a little L-shaped like that. They're a little bit different than what the uh, builder installed. I kind of like what the builder installed a little bit better, but I couldn't find those at a local store. But basically, this is gonna sit right there, so I'm gonna put a screw in right on this bottom one and then screw up to the floor joist. Theirs works a little bit better because it is this entire strap and then it can come down and kind of catch the underneath of the ductwork. But these will do. And just to be consistent, there's about an inch gap from the top to top of the ductwork to the underside of the floor joist. So that's what I'll space my new duct hangers at. All right, so now I'm gonna just hold this section up so that I can mark on it where uh, it comes in contact with the floor joist. So that way I can bring it back down on the ground and install the duct hangers. Just makes it a little bit easier when you're working by yourself. I can transfer these marks to the other side on the ground just by measuring. So again, this part is going to be against the floor joist, so I'll measure an inch down from there. Approximately, all right. And then I can just line that up with the edge of the ductwork and I know right where to drill it in. So I'm just using a self-tapping screw, uh, three quarters of an inch long. That's all there is to it. So this one's a little bit tighter quarters. So I've got this one that I just installed coming up from the top. And so I got a double elbow here and then there. And then that's gonna be right up next to this existing one uh, right there that's coming out the side. I'll show you that. All right, so that's this guy coming out the side. So you can see the new guy coming out the top and up and around 
and right there. So now I'm just gonna add another five foot section onto that and get it to approximately the center of this room. All right, so now that I've got all the supply runs uh, pretty much wrapped up, I'm gonna move on to some of the return lines. So right above here, uh, I've got my main return trunk. And what I'm gonna do is utilize this stud cavity right here as one of the return drops. So what I've gotta do first is cut out this top plate. So right there and then right there, and then I'll cut a hole into the bottom of this return duct. And then I'll put some of this, uh, I believe it's called thermopan, on the back side of that space, since that's not going to get gypsum board on the back side. Um, I'll line the whole back side of that stud cavity with a thermopan. And then once the gyp board is placed on this front side, that uh, stud cavity is going to basically act like a piece of ductwork. So then the air can pull in from the bottom um, and move up that stud cavity and then get returned through the ductwork. So let's get after that. All right, so that wraps up this one. We've got this stud spacing that's gonna act as the return line. Um, once I put drywall on here, then that will be enclosed and that's gonna pretty much act like a piece of ductwork, drawing air in and up and through the return line. So that was fairly easy. I'll probably move this wire, just run that elsewhere. But other than that, it was just putting this thermal pan on the back side and then using some of that foil tape couple staples just to kind of box that all in nicely and then here on the bottom I put one of these I don't know what it's really called but it's like a grill receiver basically it's got a little half inch lip here so the drywall is going to come right along here and be flush with that and then um, it's got a couple mounting holes on either side for a grill to mount onto so that one's all wrapped up now if we come over here the other side of the house, I've actually added in two more. So 
there's our first one down there. Here's our main trunk return line. And I've punched a hole in the top of that and I've branched off both ways. So I've enclosed this joist spacing with some more of that thermal pan. And then I'm gonna add, well, I have added this return right here. So I was gonna utilize that stud spacing, put another grill at the bottom so it can draw air in from the bottom and up and through all the ductwork. So that one's in there. Um, again, this one's gonna have a drywall on both sides. So I don't need to run the thermal pan down the stud spacing really at all. So that one's there. Come over here in this other room, the office over here. So there's the main uh, return line again. Came over here and dropped another one down util utilizing this uh, stud spacing as well. Put another grill down at the bottom. So the idea is that if we look across here, I've got my supply line coming over here. It's gonna drop uh, conditioned air into the space and that's at the ceiling. So uh, I wanted my return down at the ground level so that hopefully it draws air from the the ceiling down below kind of conditions the whole space and heats and cools uh, the entire space evenly. So if we look at this a little bit closer, I just use that same thermal pan to enclose the joist spacing and then they actually make a little end cap for this specific task that you can do. Um, just put it in there, throw a couple staples in there and then I just went around everything with some of that foil tape. So it's pretty straightforward. It does take a little bit of time but it's it's really not difficult work at all. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now I realized that this was a little bit longer of a video, but I guess I just wanted to take you through all the different steps and scenarios that I've ran into in my basement project. And maybe you can apply some of those tricks to your own project at home. If you enjoyed this video, it would be awesome if you could hit that like button down below. That just really helps me grow my channel. And it also tells YouTube to pass this video on to some other people to watch. And while you're down there, if you feel that I've earned it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. That way you're notified every time I release a new video. Again, I really appreciate you guys sticking through this whole video. And until next time, 